I've held a lot of jobs in my career, anything from like in the infrastructure space, you know, systems administration, virtualization, help desk roles, desktop roles when I was just getting started. I've also held the roles in the software development space. I've held the DevOps roles and SRE roles and titles and have led DevOps teams. And out of all the positions that I've had, you know, in, in again, in infrastructure and in software, uh, so I've been on both sides of the spectrum, the most interesting job that I've had was an SRE. Um, and being an SRE as a consultant, being an SRE as a full-time employee, it's a lot of fun. And the reason why is because I actually had the ability to combine both my software development experience and my infrastructure experience. And that's why I think an SRE is honestly the ultimate job and probably why it's in such high demand right now. And that demand is definitely not going to be going away. What's going on, everybody? My name is Michael Levan. And welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for checking out this series. Really do appreciate it. And speaking of series, this is going to be a brand new series here. And it's going to be called, Do You Want to Be an SRE? Now, it is targeted for 2022, you know, so it's going to say 2022. And the reason why is because when this comes out, like all of the episodes, it's probably going to be like right at the end of 2021 and like towards the beginning of 2022. So I didn't want to, you know, like put something out and say, this is just for 2021 because it really will be something that's geared towards helping you get the job in 2022 because we're right at the end of the year here. So what exactly is this series going to be about? Well, it's not going to be, you know, just CI CD or it's not going to be, you know, just automation. I'm actually going to take you through what skills you need to be an SRE. Everything from Linux essentials to CI CD to architecting applications and scaling applications. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the series bit here for episode one. And then after episode one, there's not going to be a lot of theory and PowerPoints or anything like that going on. I don't want to put you all through PowerPoint hell. Really what it's going to be is we're going to be doing a lot of hands-on stuff, a lot of things that you're going to be able to take and be able to do in even in your job today. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, everyone. So welcome to the Do You Want to Be an SRE series? And it's going to help you become an SRE in 2022. So first things first, the definition of an SRE, what actually is it? Well, this is Google's definition. And typically, like when I'm consulting, when I'm creating content, doing any type of advisory services, I'm always talking about SRE is how Google defines it. Because at the end of the day, for two reasons, number one, I believe in the definition of an SRE from Google. And number two, Google came up with it. So probably makes sense to listen to them about it, right? Although, of course, you know, there are different things that you can do and different things that you can change and, you know, kind of mold it into your own type of role. But at the end of the day, I do really believe that like 99.999% of Google's definition of an SRE is valid extremely. So what is it? Well, it is a site reliability engineer or site reliability engineering is a set of principles and practices that incorporates aspects of software engineering and applies them to infrastructure and operation problems. TLDR, treat infrastructure problems as if they were software problems. So really what you're going to be thinking of is you're going to be thinking about infrastructure and systems as a software developer. Now, when I say systems, this is containers, Kubernetes, EC2 instances, virtual machines, serverless systems don't just mean, you know, you know, my laptop over here or a server somewhere else in a data center systems are wherever the app is running. Okay. So DevOps versus SRE. This is obviously a, <laughs> I get this question all the time. Uh, and it's a valid question. Like it absolutely makes sense because Here's the thing, everybody, you know, it, there are so many buzzwords thrown around right now. Um, so many titles, like, I don't know why we have so many titles. Uh, I, I apologize on behalf of <laughs> well, everybody out there that keeps creating these titles. Um, you know, and it, the reason why it, it, fuss, it actually frustrates me a little bit is because it causes so much confusion for everybody. And like, it's really not fair, you know, like, Back in the day, you had a systems engineer and you had a software engineer. And there are some companies out there that still follow that protocol. Like you could go in and be doing the DevOps -y stuff at an organization, but your title might be software engineer or systems engineer. You know, it's it's not going to be one of these gajillion titles. So this is exactly why I wanted to bring up the DevOps SRE thing and why I get asked this question all the time. So again, 
by Google's definition, and this is the same definition I follow here, DevOps is a subset or a practice of SRE, uh, of site reliability engineering. So I like to think about an SRE like, you know, the parent object, or if you're looking at a, a folder directory or a folder structure, you know, you got that root directory there. So that root directory is an SRE. And then, oop, just hit my mic. <laughs> and then the subset of, you know, that directory or, you know, that object, right, inside of the SRE folder, one of the many practices among software engineering and systems engineering and all that good stuff is DevOps. DevOps is that child object. Okay, so here's another question that I get asked a lot and a lot of people disagree with me about this, but you know, to be honest, the most successful people that I've ever met in the SRE space have been developers. So, you know, you hear a lot like, oh, you don't need to be a developer to be an SRE or, you know, you don't need to know architecture and this, that, the next thing. You do. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer of this. I'm a firm believer of that. You do need to know software architecture, software development. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you have, have to create the next Twitter or something. You have to create this huge application to be a developer. No. Or to be an SRE. No. Really what you need to understand is number one, like how to write code, how what clean code looks like, how to troubleshoot. Because at the end of the day, if you're on call and you know, you get an error where it says, you know, something along the lines of, you know, here's an error, this Lambda function is throwing the error. Well, you don't, it's pretty vague. So you need to have the ability to go in and troubleshoot, see what the actual issue is, and then understand like, is it the Lambda function? Is it something that's happening in AWS? Um, is it something with like scalability? Like, is it, you know, one of the Lambda handlers aren't kicking off properly? Uh, one of the dependencies in the code aren't there? One of the modules aren't there? Or is it like a problem with the application that either you wrote or one of the developers wrote? You need to have the ability to actually dive in and see what's happening there. And you need to understand software architecture because again, you're thinking about infrastructure as a developer when you're an SRE. And because of that, you need to think like, okay, what does this application need from a resources perspective? How does it need to be scaled? What does the SLA need to look like, the uptime, all of that good stuff? So like you need to understand development practices. And to do that, you need to put your developer hat on. Now to put your developer hat on, remember, you don't need to go... Arguably, you don't need to go work as a developer. Um, you don't. You definitely don't need a computer science degree, although it's, it's not going to hurt you if you have one. Cool. If you're looking to become an SRE now and you don't have a, a computer science degree, it's perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. You really just need to understand. You know, go build an app. Think about an idea, and it doesn't have to be anything huge. But like, think about like you know something that you want. Um, you know, maybe you have a Raspberry Pi and you've been wanting to build like some type of robot, or maybe you know you want to build like a forum. You know, like a forum where people can go in and talk about becoming an SRE, for example. That'd be a pretty cool idea, actually. Now that I think about it, you know, that forum needs a front end. That forum needs middleware. That forum needs a back end. It needs a database to be able to store all the content. It needs a database, a secure highly scalable database to be able to save the usernames and the passwords for your users that are signing up. So that's a, that's a good idea right there, you know, but, but you know, you don't have, obviously don't have to use that, but there are a bunch of different ideas out there that you can use to jump into, you know, understanding application architecture and software architecture. But I know I'm beating a dead horse here. Just please keep this in mind. You must be a developer in some way, shape or form to be an SRE. Okay, so SRE primary responsibilities. Now first you got on call, okay? Repeatability, so you know, taking application code, taking uh, automation code, taking infrastructure and making it repeatable. So you should never be clicking around the AWS or the Azure or the GCP UI to you know, spin up uh, Lambda functions or to spin up Azure functions or to spin up uh, GKE cluster inside of GCP. You should always be thinking about things from a repeatability standpoint. Okay, making the automation code repeatable. You want to make it repeatable. Everything that you do, you want to make repeatable. Okay, systems. Again, we're talking containers. We're talking Kubernetes. Uh, we're talking Linux boxes. We're talking Windows boxes. We're talking serverless. Anything that an application can be hosted on, it's considered a system. Okay, automation, 
goes hand in hand with the repeatability, of course, but automation is a huge thing. You're going to be thinking about how to automate your infrastructure. You're going to be thinking about how to automate your software deployments. You're going to be thinking about how to automate your applications, bunch of stuff in here. And then again, I know I touched on this uh, in the previous slide, so I'm not going to beat the dead horse again here, but software development and architecture. Now, I want to go ahead and I want to switch over to a web browser and I'm going to bring up LinkedIn and I want to show everybody a few things here. Okay, so I went to LinkedIn and I literally just searched for site reliability engineer. I didn't put any, uh, you know, well, I guess one filter is just um, the site reliability engineer title. But what I want to show is I want to show a few jobs here that are, you know, essentially like what they're looking for in, in today's world. So the first thing is Twitter. Okay, so a senior site reliability engineer. So if we scroll down here, all right, We'll see, you know, who you are. You have a solid understanding of systems and application design. You're detailed or problem solving. You're, you're adaptable and enjoy working with large complex systems. Uh, you seek new initiatives. Of course, every job should, uh, should have that. So the qualification essentially, practical knowledge of shell scripting, Python or Go, Ruby, etc. You're going to see Python and Go a lot, okay? Solid understanding of Linux servers, okay? Detailed understanding of tools and methodologies developing infrastructure configuration and deployments, large data sets, experience using containerization. All right, let's go to the Microsoft one here. Okay, so responsibilities, design and implement data pipe and dashboards, design, write and deliver software, optimize services by automating and improving pipelines, influence and collaborate across organizations for best practices, okay. Again, qualifications here, Azure development experience, you know, a lot of this uh, infrastructure as code stuff and serverless and, and all of that good stuff. Implementing and automating CI CD tools, uh, good knowledge of troubleshooting Windows and, and Linux, Kubernetes, uh, strong analytical and problem solving skills, leadership skills, proven experience creating distributed systems. All right, let's try to find another one here for a major league baseball. That actually sounds pretty cool if you're a sports person. All right, so a few of the different areas that they're focusing on, Kubernetes, incident response, user experience, high availability, debugging, observability, All right? Again, you're gonna write software, Python, Go. Remember, we keep seeing this Python and Go thing, All right? Grafana, so some, a lot of monitoring software, of course, seeing APM, so application performance monitoring on call. Looks like uh, MLB uses GCP, which is interesting, actually. Figured they would have used like AWS or Azure, but GCP is of course growing. So, all right, let's go ahead and let's keep scrolling. We see a bunch of Microsoft stuff. Ooh, TikTok. Let's take a look at that one. All right. So, what you'll do: um, engage and improve the whole life cycle, design and implement software, capacity planning, troubleshooting. Who they're looking for? Experience in at least one of the languages: Python, Go, Perl. Again, this whole Python Go thing. We're continuing to see this familiar with system operations, uh, experience of large scale systems, familiar with CI CD, effective communication. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more because I don't want to beat this dead horse here, but I do want to uh, drive this point home. All right, let's look at Apple. Okay, so again, five years of uh, experience with Linux. So again, taking the Linux thing out of there, understanding systems, DevOps engineering practices, all right. Um, CI CD is in here, configuration management is in here. Some networking knowledge, of course, that's definitely needed. Uh, experience automating workflows with Python, Perl, or Ruby. Again, we got the Python thing in here. Linux, monitoring, etc. okay? So, again, not trying to beat the dead horse, but this is obviously very important. So all the things that we're gonna be talking about throughout this course are gonna be what you know we saw in the PowerPoint in the theory section and what we're seeing through all of these job postings here. And with that, that's going to go ahead and wrap up week one, episode one. I believe, uh, let me see here. I'm just going to go ahead and check. We got six weeks. All right. So we're going to be going through this for six weeks. I might extend it to seven. We'll see. So six to seven weeks of this free course. Thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment. It helps the algorithm a ton. It helps get this content out there for others to see. And it helps the channel grow so I can continue to create this cool content. Thank you so much, everybody. Really do appreciate it. We'll see you again next time.